The title of uh, this tandem talk together with Jan Lukas uh, is uh, Hammond and Sheffield's Power Law Earn from a Genealogical Point of View. So uh, what is a polya urn? This is uh, known to all of you, right? Uh, in the beginning, we have one ball in the urn. The next ball comes inevitably into the urn by choosing this one as uh, her mother. The next ball has uh, two uh, possibilities to choose uh, her mother uh, and so on, right? So that's, uh, that's the genealogy of a polya urn where we have here the ball zero, ball one, ball two, ball three. But what about when we have a memory in the urn, right? Uh, it's that uh, the next ball um, likes to uh, be descendant, not of the early uh, ones in the urn, but rather of the more recent ones, right? Um, and so this is uh, the situation in this uh, power law urn, where we have a random variable, which has integer values or uh, uh, natural numbers as, it, as its uh, uh, values and has a power tail. So the alpha will be the main player in this urn. And uh, then uh, there is again also an L which is slowly varying, which may modify this tail, right? Now, uh, you see immediately uh, a problem here because uh, when we have a, in a way, then homogeneous drawing situation, right? It's not that uh, the, the uh, law of drawing the, the balls as in the uh, polya urn becomes flatter and flatter, which it's uniform from all of those that are in the urn. But here we have always this uh, time uh, 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 horizon R, which stays in distribution the same, then inevitably, right? Uh, some balls will draw their parent from the remote past. Now, this uh, requires that the urn should have started to be filled in the remote past. And it's absolutely no problem to draw the genealogy of this uh, urn in one stroke. Namely, we have in each integer i a random variable ri, which uh, says that this i minus ri is the parent of this ball or individual, if you like, right? So for those of you who like this, particularly Nick, right? Uh, but also we, be, we become lovers of we, of webs and weaves. Uh, that's a Z indexed web, because of course, when uh, two of those uh, choose the same parent, then the ancestral line from here on will go together. It's a Z indexed web, but with crossing paths. So it does not quite fit into the theory you have built on so far, but uh, well, it's just uh, um, this, this sort of genealogy, right? Okay, what is the Hammond Sheffield urn to wrap up? Um, we have here uh, this kind of uh, random graph and the genealogy is a family of coalescing renewal processes uh, running backwards on the integers, right? And to avoid periodicity so that uh, the world does not fall apart into uh, odds and integers, we assume that uh, R puts mass on one, or more generally, we could assume that R is uh, aperiodic, has uh, uh, a support with a greatest common divisor one. So far, so okay. Right. Please ask questions whenever you want. Now, the ancestral lineage of an individual. I is this guy, 
right? It's the uh, union of all the ancestors, the individual itself, the parent, the grandparent, and so on. This is the uh, script AI. Now, this uh, Hammond Sheffield paper was not alone in the world. It had predecessors, concurrence, and generalizations. And uh, an important predecessor is uh, the Kai Kron Lasku paper from uh, 2000 with the title Coalescent Theory for Seed Bank Models and a Concurrent and Generalization at the Same Time is a paper by Vlad Gonzalez Casanova Kurz Bano, uh, the ancestral process of long range seed bank models. And it's indeed Adrian who pointed us uh, to the paper of uh, Hammond and Sheffield, some, I don't know, three, three years ago. Um, and uh, then with some nice coincidences, uh, we uh, got into business also with. Uh, Alan Hammond uh, in Berkeley. And one of the very, very few advantages of this crazy Corona time was that there were online uh, lectures which could be joined also by people in Europe and even uh, we could contribute a little bit uh, uh, because he at that time had resumed this paper and uh, oh, okay. So um, this paper by uh, uh, um, Adrian and co-authors uh, is uh, on a very similar situation where we don't have one individual per time, but capital N of them, right? Imagine you have capital N of them uh, indexed by uh, one up to a capital N at time G and each individual I, which is then named uh, L and G, chooses its parent in the very same way from a previous generation with the same power law uh, uh, search and uh, chooses it in the, uniformly from the individuals at that generation. So that's the, that's the picture, right? Very similar to the one on the blackboard, uh, but now with this uniform choice from that uh, previous uh, generation. For today, we will take the simple case, uh, N will always be one. So that's this situation. And an individual can be identified with the time at which it lives, right? At which it comes into the urn, if you like. That's the individual I, right? Now, first question, is the genealogy a single tree or a forest consisting of many trees? You see, this will depend on, on the alpha because the smaller the alpha, the longer the tails, that is the bigger the jumps, right? So for small, alpha, we would expect to have not just one forest, right? It might be that uh, uh, genealogical lines miss each other. And for bigger alpha, uh, we might expect that they find them. Okay, for three quarters, here is uh, a, a simulation how the individuals between zero and 100 or 200, between zero and 200 find their common ancestor, right? Uh, and, uh, the, um, and it's just two individuals which we look at. It's the individual zero whose ancestral lineage is pictured in blue. And it's the individual 200 whose ancestral lineage is pictured in red, right? And then you see uh, they, they miss each other for a while, yeah, right? And it's here that they get each other. 
And if we look not only at individual zero and 200 or 100, here it's zero and 100, right? But all the individuals, zero, one, two, three, four, and so on, 50, 100, and draw the tree. Then you see this individual uh, here, it could be 55 or 60, right? This individual makes a large jump instantly, right? And then, um, oh no, no, let's see. Uh, it does not make a large jump. It's, 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 uh, it, it makes it a jump, that's the visualization, right? Uh, uh, this individual makes a jump here, then a smaller jump, a small jump, then a large jump again, and so on, right? Uh, and uh, here, it coalesces with uh, the individual at, at zero, right? So it's this, uh, um, the, or, or, uh, these little uh, bars are, uh, are the, the, the jumps and the vertical lineages here are the coalescences, right? Um, and this was the recent part of the tree, which we had here, uh, not all had coalesced already, but and this is the ancient part. And here you'll see at uh, minus uh, 2,800, uh, all have found their common ancestor. Now, and these are for, um, alpha equal three over seven are the genealogies of the individuals between zero and 100. Um, here, um, um, back to minus 500, and you see uh, way of them have not yet found uh, their common ancestor. And uh, with thousand, it looks uh, uh, even more gray here, right? Uh, and this is no, um, coincidence that uh, above one half and below one half, we have a different picture because uh, at alpha equals one half, we have uh, a critical situation, right? Uh, now, alpha equal one half, will they meet or won't they meet? Uh, and uh, the Solution is on the is on that slide, right? If we would have more time, that would all be a wonderful way of uh, uh, giving little problems and then giving remark. As you say, it's uh, we have to be sweet, right? Uh, but uh, time is finite. So uh, this is um, this is the answer for n equals one half, uh, because in uh, one half there is a prominent. Uh, um, way to think of these jumps, right? Prominent way to think of these jumps. One half stable, right? That reminds of the time which a simple random walk needs to return to the origin when starting from the origin, right? So you have a, a simple random walk starting one dimensional, starting from your from the origin, it will need, and I will always draw time uh, in that direction, right? Because we are always thinking of uh, in that part of the story, uh, ancestral lineages, right? So uh, this random walk needs a half stable time until it reaches the origin, right? Uh, and uh, then um, again and again, and um, well, it's it's the return times of a one uh, of a, a one-dimensional random walk, and uh, if we put this uh, into uh, two copies, then uh, we have two uh, one-dimensional random walks, and ask: uh, Is there a time when they meet? Well, we have ruled out the periodic periodicity here. Um, and, and so uh, it's uh, aperiodic uh, and they do meet because of recurrence of the two dimensional random walk, right? So, uh, but it's just on the edge, it's just on the edge. And um, so the general case, when we have uh, a renewal function, um, this is uh, the, the best way to think of it is QN is the probability 
Uh, I should point here, right? It's so uh, sed uh, seductive here. Uh, uh, the probability uh, that uh, zero is in the ancestral line of n. This probability we have here zero is just the renewal function qn, right? Uh, and so um, there is a little observation uh, which says that uh, those uh, two ancestral lineages, AI and AJ, they coalesce almost surely if and only if the sum of the squares of this renewal function, sum of QN squared converges, right? Um, and indeed, this is a, a in both the papers of Hammond and Sheffield and uh, Blatt and co-authors. Uh, and uh, the key is that uh, if you take independent copies of uh, those uh, ancestral uh, lineages, then they meet finitely often with probability one if and only if uh, uh, this uh, sum of the uh, QN squares is finite and they meet infinitely often um, if and only if this sum of the QN squares is infinite. Now, um, a natural setting for alpha tails, which loses a little bit of generality, but gains an enormous uh, commodity, right? I mean, uh, uh, helps us to to uh, understand, just like um, if you would say, why stick to alpha tails? And then we say, okay, alpha tails are such a nice thing. Uh, if you understand alpha tails, then you understand a lot. But within the alpha tails, there can still happen nasty things, depending on how nasty the slowly varying function is, right? And there, there was a, uh, actually, this, is, this has a long history. Uh, Matthias Birkner, uh, decades ago, when uh, he wrote his Diplom uh, Arbeit in Frankfurt, he already dealt with this case. And uh, at that time, uh, Tony's paper was not even written where he uh, clarified uh, a condition on the slowly varying function, which made things nice. And only recently, Caravena and Tony, Tony is now past 80. There is a beautiful volume on his work, uh, which I saw in Oberwolfach a few weeks ago. Um, Caravena and Tony in EJP gave conditions which together with uh, the condition alpha tail, which is always running, right? Uh, um, are equivalent to the nice behavior of the renewal function, right? If the renewal function uh, is nicely behaved also has a nice tail, then the things become much nicer. And uh, so this is this condition, um, which is entailed with their, actually one should phrase it this way, you have to think quite a time until you find examples which do not satisfy this, right? So the examples which do not satisfy this, what they call strong renewal theorem, the strong renewal theorem. It's actually a condition or it's a property, right? Uh, uh, this condition SRT, that the Q, QN is so nicely behaved, follows from some uh, uh, very natural uh, uh, conditions. Um, okay, and we will always uh, now assume this SRT, right? That also the, the renewal function has uh, these nice tails. And this Uh, for any for any alpha, I think yes, 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 yes. Right. Okay, and uh, under SRT, this dichotomy is of course now trivial, right? Because uh, when we have SRT, then we have this, uh, and then it just depends on. Uh, the square is then n to the two alpha minus two. And then it's, it's the usual thing that the summability is then at alpha equals one half, right? Now, uh, Hammond and Sheffield, they uh, did not discuss this. Uh, uh, it was pre that thing. And, uh, and they also did not uh, look. I mean, they, from the very beginning, uh, did what we will then call a coloring of the families, right? Uh, they did not uh, look into the genealogy so much, right? Uh, and they uh, used Fourier analysis 
uh, and uh, derived this dichotomy from generating functions and uh, from Tauberian analysis without SRT, right? So that's that's nice to nice to know. Uh, okay, now uh, having this uh, concept of the genealogy of the urine, uh, we can now Jan. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, I was uh, I was just saying um, alpha equals one half is critical, and I came up with uh, the uh, natural case where L equals one, and then we have exactly the tail uh, behavior of uh, the return times of a simple random walk, right? And for that, we know that. Uh, it's um, recurrent, it's the, the two lineages will find each other. And we know it's critical because two, two dimensions are critical, but you point out uh, correctly that uh, in the case alpha equals one half, it depends on the L, right? Whether we meet or not, right? And that's uh, of course can be settled by exactly this, this condition. Thanks for the question. Um, now um, we have this random, uh, equivalence relation, which says that I and J are related. They belong to the same family, right? Uh, if they have a common ancestor, right? So we have a random partition of the integers, right? And uh, what we saw so far is that uh, this random partition uh, is trivial if alpha equals, if alpha is bigger than one half and it's non-trivial and in fact, it has infinitely, that's a, uh, an ergodicity and a, a stationarity uh, argument. It cannot have finitely many, but it has infinitely many um, components or families if alpha is smaller than one half, right? Okay, that's, that's you have to keep in mind. It's, it's still the preamble. I, have, I will have to finish part one in, in, a, in 20 minutes. Um, that's still the preamble of the tandem talk. Uh, the genealogy of the ha uh, Hammond Sheffield urn is a single tree if alpha is bigger than one half and the forest consisting of infinitely many trees if alpha is smaller than one half. And here is the plan of the remainder of the tandem talk. I will speak on the forest part. Jan Lukas will speak on the tree part. The forest part that's already published in the archive. The tree part is the hard part, which we are, which we are working on, right? Uh, and uh, we are happy about the input. Actually, there are people here who gave us already very valuable input. Jason in Montreal, we had a nice discussion and uh, Adrian all the way and uh, Florin with the, with the Stein thing. You will, we will come to that uh, and I'm missing. Uh, uh, okay, each of the two parts will have an uncolored section, purely genealogical and a colored section where families of related individuals will be assigned types uh, whose frequencies are then in uh, whose frequencies in the block zero to n uh, can be studied as n grows, right? So if you like, there is a backward point of view, the genealogy and the forward point of view, which is the a sort of uh, uh, evolution of type frequencies. And we have to define what is a family when you have just a single tree, right? That, that we have to define that will be uh, in, in the second part, but, but I mean, just to tell you in the right Fisher case, right? Uh, if you go back to uh, time minus infinity, uh, everybody is related with everybody at generation zero, right? And still you can say you start out with everybody its own family and you look in the future, that's actually what is done, right? Uh, and that will be done in the, the second half of the second part. Uh, now, uh, part one. Here, ancestral lineages may miss each other forever with positive probability, right? And that's the logo. Cats over cats, right? Okay. Um, now we first give two results on the genealogy of the Hammond Sheffield urn, uh, and that's my credo. Genealogies first, right? Uh, and types afterwards. 
uh, if there is a neutral situation. Of course, if there is a selective situation, I mean, you need the types, right, uh, in order to go, to go on. But uh, uh, if, if things are neutral, then it's nice to have a graphical representation and uh, to build everything on the genealogy. Now, uh, two results. First is the asymptotics of the asymptotic, uh, well, the asymptotic probability of being related. Right? So here is uh, type uh, individual zero, here is individual n, we are in the forest situation, what's the probability that those two are related? Right? And uh, the second is the asymptotic distribution of the depth of the MRCA of two individuals, right? zero and n, how far do you have to go back to find their common ancestor, given that they are related? because they might be not related, right? Uh, uh, or act, act, yeah, in the discrete case, uh, they can be related, they uh, might not, and so on. And both work under our standard assumption of Caravena, this Caravena Tony story, SRT, right? Uh, okay, the following relates the renewal function and this asymptotic property. And that's again, uh, uh, an easy remark, which is, uh, uh, based on a, a first uh, meeting decomposition, if you like, right, uh, of two ancestral lineages. The probability of being related times, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a, an equality of expected values, right? Uh, you, you ask how often that do, uh, what's the expectation of two independent lineages uh, meet, meeting? And that's this uh, renewal uh, equation, if you like. And, um, the asymptotics of the right hand side, right, under the SRT condition, right, it's analysis. Because if we have the, the tail of the QN, and then uh, we turn this into a Riemann sum, uh, because of the, uh, because of the uh, slowly varying L, it's non trivial analysis you have to bring in Karamata's theorem uh, on the slowly varying function uh, zoo. And, uh, uh, but still it works out and we, we did it. Uh, um, and this is uh, this lemma, right? Uh, that this term here has this, uh, well, it's actually a, a beta integral which comes out up here. Uh, although this is, I look at Florin, right? Who was very helpful at that time also. Uh, it's a, a, an integral from zero to infinity and still it's a beta integral with a substitution, right? Uh, and uh, the asymptotic property of pair pair well, is really- okay, Can I ask you a question? Yes, if, if this is a Nachspielzeit, yes. Uh, yes, for sure, yeah. gl gladly. Yeah. Oh, yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, if you go back to your previous slide. Yes. Maybe I missed something, but uh, how do you change the sum of the square like to the sum of uh, QK, QK plus N? Uh, here, this one, the, uh, in the remark. Yes. In the, re in the remark, yes. yes. Um, uh, well, this is if you look at the expected number of visits, which the two lineages have, one starting in zero and one starting in N, right? Mm -hmm. Two renewal chains, one starting in zero, one starting in N, and you ask how often do they meet? Independent copies, right, mm -hmm. of these renewal chains. Mm -hmm. Right, then they must meet at all. This is the first uh, factor, right? Uh, and this is the uh, expected number of what's going on then, right? You see? Um, uh, the both both sides, in particular this one, it's the expected number of uh, the uh, times which uh, uh, which a chain starting in zero and the chain starting in n meet. Mm -hmm. You 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 believe that this is that the right hand side uh, does does this right? Yeah. Right, and the, and the uh, the equality that also the the left hand side equals this is that you make a first visit decomposition. You say they have to meet at all, right? And from then, they are two uh, copies starting at the same time. And that's oh, the passage, okay, okay. Yeah, right? Yeah, sure. yes. Thanks for the question, Emmanuel. Yeah, Thank Okay. You. Uh, and then um, 
putting the remark and the lemma together, just, uh, just gluing it very simply, uh, we have that uh, we have this, uh, we have this uh, asymptotics, right? Uh, and it's a nice asymptotics because we now have n to the two alpha minus one, right? Since we are in the, uh, in the regime alpha between zero and one, uh, one half, right? This is still smaller than one, right? Uh, so the probability that zero and n uh, uh, are related decays in a controlled fashion, right? Now the asymptotic depth of the pairwise MCR um, that um, is now something different, not, not the probability that they are related, but where do they find each other, right? Where, where does the MRCA sit? So that's the MRCA depth. And uh, this, we, we say this is the DN, right? Uh, and assume now for simplicity that the LN equals one, right? So otherwise some other terms would pop up involving the L. Uh, then uh, this is the content of this proposition. The sequence of these uh, uh, random variables, DN divided by N, conditioned under the event that they meet, converges in distribution to a random variable whose density has the same uh, term which we just saw, right? This uh, x to the alpha minus one times one plus x to the alpha minus one, it's the same term which popped up here, right? In the lemma. Um, and this is known as the beta prime density. I did not know this uh, before, before this. And uh, you think of the beta uh, as a quotient of uh, two gammas, a gamma divided by the sum of two gammas. And the beta prime is just the quotient of two gammas. No, not one gamma divided by the sum of two gammas, but uh, the quotient of two gammas. One having uh, 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 one parameter and the other having the, the other parameter, right? Uh, okay. Now, uh, an important message of this proposition too is if two lineages meet, they meet at scale n, right? You have zero and n, and if they meet, they meet at scale n. And on that scale, it's still heavy tailed, right? Now we go to what uh, Hammond and Sheffield actually did already, but we do it with another proof, right? Uh, uh, slightly less general uh, uh, situation because we have the SRT, right? Uh, this uh, uh, strong renewal theorem story. And um, now that's the, that's the objective. The families have interesting fluctuations in the block N as N becomes large. We have uh, big families, small families, um, uh, uh, new families, uh, be becoming maybe bigger or maybe not, who knows, right? I mean, there is a long memory and uh, interesting things going on. And this becomes visible by a random coloring of the families, right? And Hammond and Sheffield just propose uh, a uh, plus one minus one coloring by a, by a random coin toss, right? So um, coloring the families at random, uh, we color them a little bit because here we want to be again a little bit more general than Hammond and Sheffield, still hoping that the paper will, will find, uh, uh, we, we, we didn't uh, get, we, we, we submitted it, uh, but we will be curious to, to get a report in the next week, so whatever. Um, so uh, this, this was uh, I say a little bit more general. We, we take a centered real valued random variable in the Hammond Sheffield case, it would be plus coin tossing, right? Uh, given the partition P induced by the Hammond Sheffield urn, let uh, Z sub C be independent copies of Z and with uh, CI being the set of relatives of I put SN, the sum of I equal one to N, right? And Z taken from this family, right? So uh, related individuals get related, get the same color, right? 
So theorem, assume A, Z is binary, or it has a fourth moment and is general, and the strong renewal theorem holds, right? This SRT. Then the sequence of processes, SMT, M is now the running index of a sequence of processes. T is the time, right? And the norming is M to the minus one half plus alpha. So uh, alpha is between zero and one. Therefore, uh, sorry, alpha is between zero and one half. Therefore, this norming is stronger than the central limit theorem norming, stronger than the square root n norming, but weaker than the law of large numbers norming, right? Uh, and and uh, it turns out that this converges to a centered Gaussian process with continuous paths, stationary increments, and this variance, right? Which is known as a fractional Brownian motion with Hurst parameter one half plus alpha, right? So, uh, Three steps of the proof. First, we show the asymptotics of the variance, right? I mean, that's then check asymptotic Gaussianity and three proof tightness. All of them have a, a little story. I mean, uh, the first is, of course, uh, now there, right? I almost because we, we have all these genealogical uh, informations, we can just look at who is who is. I mean, it's like if you have a, a walk where you have a strong correlation sense, and uh, then uh, some steps are just uh, looking into the past and do the same, right? And and in, but it's coming from a random uh, partition. Uh, the second is the hardest part, and. Uh, this was also the hardest part in the Hammond Sheffield and they do it completely differently. And the third, well, the tightness, that was our entrance, a ticket into the business because we discovered a little thing to, to repair in the Hammond and Sheffield paper. And, and so we, we got into business with, with Alan and so on. Uh, now, uh, in Hammond and Sheffield, those uh, steps one and two are achieved by Fourier analysis and the Martingale central limit theorem, right? Uh, uh, and we work under this assumption and have the genealogical proof. The proof of the variance asymptotics is that easy, right? We have the variance of Sn is the variance of the Z times this probability of being related. It's just uh, uh, introducing the, the uh, correlations, right? Uh, and then apply proposition one, which said this, and it's done, right? Uh, now the proof of the asymptotic normality, the central uh, Martingale central limit theorem, you have to find the right filtration. You have to uh, look for uh, predictions and so on, right? Uh, and they uh, did it and did it uh, very, very uh, nicely. And, uh, uh, and, and they used uh, colors heavily, right? Uh, what do we do? Well, again, Florin at one time said, uh, maybe you should look into Stein, right? Uh, into the Stein world. He uh, has done his uh, bachelor thesis and much of his studies with Ralph Neininger. So uh, the Stein uh, world, Stein, Charles Stein. Um, and uh, this is what we did. Uh, we looked at the more general situation, a, a sequence of random partitions of uh, this uh, block zero to n and the same story, but now it, it need not be Hammond and Sheffield, right? It's a, a sequence of random partitions. And um, nicely enough, right? Uh, if the triple and the quartet uh, merging probabilities can be controlled in that way that the probability that uh, a random triple of the block, right? Uh, lies in the same partition element is of the small o than a power three over two of this pairwise uh, relatedness property and with the quadruples in the same manner and some nice little uh, correlation thing, uh, which uh, turns out to be true in our setting, uh, then uh, the um, this um, Sn, which is precisely the same story, right? Again, uh, turns out to be asymptotically Gaussian, right? Um, this is a consequence of a proposition 
which uh, builds on uh, a theorem uh, in Stein's uh, 68 uh, uh, lecture notes and which turns out to be of independent interest because we found uh, a, a, a result in the literature which is too quick, uh, which uh, states uh, this as a corollary of the of a theorem of Stein and this works only for deterministic partitions, right? Uh, so in fact, uh, this has its own story, but uh, now uh, a bachelor student worked out all details uh, uh, and proved this Stein story, uh, uh, reproved it and so on. So this is, this is a theorem of its own in the spirit of Lindeberg, right? Uh, when you have that, uh, uh, these uh, correlations uh, and the pair and the triple correlations are not too big, then it's asymptotically normal. And that's the case for our Hammond and Sheffield partition. And it's even more st much stronger. It's not the three halves, but uh, it's two plus delta, right? Uh, and this is because the MRCA um, is so shortly found, right? I mean, it's found on a short scale, right? Uh, you don't get information when you say uh, those two are related, the other one does not care. You can use the MRCA as a dummy uh, and uh, go from a two to three, say, if they, if they meet, then take the MRCA and let it meet with it. I, I mean, that's that's the very intuitive background. Well, for a proof of this and the other statements, I refer to this ArcSive uh, uh, article, and I, I, I'm, I, it's fine, right? Yeah, I would be happy for these questions. 